Hello and welcome to the ZTPFGI demonstration. In this demo, we'll look at how we can trace source code in ZTPFGI. As an example, let's trace some C source code. We can use the test program APE4. Some of the routines used in this program can be found in the APE4A1 source file. As we're already in a ZTPF session, we can go ahead and lock APE4A1 into source view simply by double-clicking it in the Load Sets window. Now let's open an ALC terminal and run a Z message that uses APE4. The execution stops at the top of the locked file. The blue dots denote executable lines. The pink line with the blue arrow is the current execution point. This line has not yet been executed. If we look at the call stack, we can see that it provides us with information about where we are stopped. It shows us the function name, the member, the SO, the number of the line that we're stopped at, the stack address and the static address. The watch window is currently empty because we haven't set any watches yet, and the variables window shows some local variables that have not yet been assigned values. Now let's step into the doAddditional tests1 function. Notice that the call stack has updated to show that we are now in the doAddditional tests1 function, which was called by APE4. The variables window has updated to show the variables that are local to this function. Let's step through the next function without stopping and set a watch on the variable Rolodex1. Rolodex 1 is currently empty because it has not yet been initialized. If we step again, Rolodex 1 will be initialized. Now, if we look again at the watch and variables windows, we can see that variables that have changed are highlighted so that they stand out. You can see that there are now three customers in Rolodex 1. Now let's add another customer. Mr. Kennedy. This line calls the Rolodex1 object add customer function to add Mr. Kennedy to Rolodex1. However, the C Rolodex class is not defined in the APE4A1 source file, as can be seen by looking at the APE4A1 files outline. It is actually defined in the file APE4CA1 which we can see if we open APE4CA1 and look at its outline. If we try to step into the add customer function now, we won't be able to because APE4CA1 is not locked into source view. Let's go ahead and try stepping into it anyway. As you can see, although we click step into, We've stepped through the function and stopped at the next executable line. Although we didn't step into the add customer function, the line was still executed. This can be seen by the change in the variables. You can see that the customer count has been incremented and that Kennedy is at index 3. Another convenient way of keeping an eye on the values of your variables is to mouse over them in the editor area. Their values are displayed right where your mouse is. The next line is also a call to add customer. It adds Nixon to Rolodex 1 and passes the result of a call to get customer as one of its parameters. This time, let's lock APE4CA1 into source view first. When we step, we will first step into the get customer function. We can click Step Out to run until we've finished Get Customer. Now if we step, we can step into the Add Customer function. The call stack reflects that we are now in Add Customer in APE4CA1. The watch that we set on Rolodex1 is disabled because Rolodex1 is not declared within this function. And the Variables window has been updated to show variables that pertain to this function. 
Now, if we want to, we can continue to step through this function, all the time keeping a watch on our variables. Once we no longer need to observe this function, we can click Step Out to continue running until we exit the Add Customer function. Now, this line has finished executing, so if we step, we advance to the next line. And Nixon has been added to Rolodex 1 at index 4. If we no longer need to trace a particular file, we can unlock it by selecting Remove from Source View Trace from the Load Sets Windows pop up menu. Now, let's take a look at breakpoints. We can set a breakpoint simply by clicking in the margin on the line where we want to stop the execution. When we hit Run, the execution will run until it reaches the line with the breakpoint. And you can see the changes to your variables. If we step a few more times, we can see some simple variables being assigned values. If we need to, we can change the values of the variables simply by editing the existing values in the Variables window. And we can see that the variables value has changed in the inline variables watch as well. We can also run to cursor. This would run until the line with the cursor on it is reached. All the intervening lines would be executed. Branch to cursor would jump to the line with the cursor on it, but without executing any of the intervening lines. When we're done, we can click Run No Trace to continue running the command to completion. Or, we can click Exit ECB to exit immediately without executing any more lines. Doing this means that there's no reply from the terminal because the command did not complete. Thanks for watching this demonstration of a C++ source level trace in ZTPFGI. To find out more, please watch some of our other demos that are available on our website, take a look at our brochure, or contact us for further information.